Hello scholars, welcome to 6.07 Solving Exponential Functions. Now, before we actually get started on this lesson, um, take a look at 6.04. We have defined that f of x is same thing as y. p is the initial value, which is the same thing as the basic form of a. And of course, that 1 plus r used to be the base. Or if it's a decay function, it's 1 minus r and raised to input variable x, which is the exponent, right? So here we define that f of x is the current amount, p is the initial amount, r is the percentage growth or decay in decimal, and then x is the time passed. So we are going to use this definition, and scholars, you do have to memorize this to solve some exponential functions. So example one. Emily is going to invest $870 and leave it in an account for 18 years. What interest rate to the nearest hundredth of a percent would be required in order for Emily to end up with $2,730? So we're going to go ahead and start annotating and identifying what the given information is. So she's going to invest. So that is the initial amount. And then she's going to leave it in an account for 18 years. So that's the unit of time. So T is 18. And then what interest rate to the nearest hundredth of a percent? So we're talking R is what we do not know would be required in order for Emily to end up with $2,730. So that is going to be f of t. So, I'm sorry scholars, I don't mean to confuse you, but I don't know why I chose f of x before, okay? I actually personally prefer t as a value of time, input variable. So, basically, I just changed the x into t. So, f of t here is the current amount or amount after t years or whatever unit of time is. So, 2730. Now we're going to put it into the, um, the form. So here, actually, have this written down. So if you look, let's go ahead and set up the equation, right? This is this. Now here, actually, it's 1 plus R because she's investing the money and she's going to end up with higher amount. Now we do have to, oh, actually, never mind. Okay, R to the 18. So then now here, we're going to actually, let's first identify, since we're solving for R, we're going to identify the operations done to R first. So first step, we're going to have to add 1. And then second step is, after I add 1, I'm going to raise it to 18 power. And then last step is the uh, multiply by 870, right? So we're going to go backwards undoing each one of them. So multiply. So to undo, I got to divide. I'll use this one probably. So then here, you'd be tempted to go to your calculator, but don't do that yet. So then here, cancels out, I get 1 plus r raised to 18, right? So I undid, undid this. Now, how do I undo raising it to 18? Well, you raise it to 1 over 18, 1 over 18, okay? Which is the same thing as actually taking the 18th root, okay? But, you know, I'm not going to write like that. It's kind of complicated. So now we can, right, when exponent is raised to exponent, we multiply them together, they actually cancel out. So we're going to now type it into the calculator. Please do use parentheses if you have older version of the calculator. All right. Okay, so something like that. And now here, these cancel out, so I got 1 plus r. 
I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. I get 0 0.06592 equals R. And then, um, actually, this one says round the R to the nearest hundredth of a percent. So we're going to first convert it to percentage. So you can move the decimal 2 to the right, or you can multiply this number by 100. Oh, I forgot. Subtract 1, and then multiply by 100. Oops. And this is what we get. So nearest hundredth. So 100 has two zeros. Chop off here. That's 9, so I got to round up. So the final answer is 6.56%. Let's go on. Oh, sick. so these are actually the steps that we have just used. Okay, we first identify the given information. Now we set up the equation, right? We plugged in to the naked form by assigning each one of them. There's one variable missing, so then I'm gonna solve for the missing variable. Okay, all right, let's go on to example two. Um, I would strongly recommend that you pause the video, identify the given information, and then set up equation. Then play the video again. Great. Rate. So here, people can write 2.5, but I personally prefer converting right away to the decimal. Okay. The way I check it is if I move 2 to the right, it better be that percentage, right? Okay. And then how much would the team need to invest? So we don't know what P is. And let me see. Count to reach. So we want to end up with this balance, right? So that actually is F of T. And actually they say in 20 years. So there we go. P is 20 years. You know what? Let me put the units down because sometimes problems get trickier with the units. So bam. Now let's set up the equation. So P is what I don't know. One plus this is again plus because money is getting invested is going to grow. We want to uh, we want it to grow. So now let's pause for a second. We're solving for P, right? Right here. And look carefully. I end up multiplying p by whatever this number is. This number, this number. So I'm going to go ahead and actually divide both sides by that number. Right? So then this actually cancels out and I can just simply solve for p. So I just have to type it into the calculator. And bam, 2929.30. So um, usually when we talk about money, we would round it to the nearest cent. Right? Uh, but actually, let's go back to the problem and say, invest to the nearest $10. Notice how it doesn't have TH, $10. So actually, here, we're going to not go to 10th place. We're going to go to $10 place, right here, 10 place. And chop off, and then look beyond. We're going to have to round up. So she's going to have to invest about $2,930. All right, last one. Let's go. Example three. Nay is a um, leading figure in platypus conservation effort. Nay notices a platypus population doubles every four weeks. Whoa, okay. So doubles, so we already know that the base is two. Every four weeks, yo, we learned it. Every four weeks, that means my exponent is going to look like t over four. And then there are currently, so I realized that today, that many people have tripped up that 10 is actually represent P of T. Okay, let's just think about this for a second. Continue reading it. 10 plus 5, blah, blah, blah. T represents time in weeks. 
that's the population of Spotify with respect to time. How many Spotify will there be in 105 days, right? So I think what I could have done better is instead of defining this as a current amount, we should have defined it as amount left after t time. So here, this would be actually the initial amount of plot of pi. Yeah, and then this would be the time. So hold on, what is this time? Now, did anyone notice that the unit of time is actually different? Right? We have every four weeks. If t represents a time in weeks, but then I'm given time in days. So actually, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and convert these days into how many weeks? And let me put it in the calculator. Let's say 15 weeks. Yeah. All right. I'll set up the equation. So P of T. I'm just going to go for the naked equation. So it's 10 flat pi. And actually, so scholars, here, the value of R is going to be actually 1. Okay. Remember, the doubling is basis 2, right? But then remember, back to the growth, okay? This base is made up of 1 plus R. Yeah? So if 1 plus R is equal to 2, R must be 1. Right? It's going back to that idea of when you double something, you're increasing it by 100%. And of course, T over 4. Now what I got to do is, this is asking you will find me the output when input is 15 for this function. So I'm going to do p of 15 and t to the 15 over 4. I'm just going to type it into the calculator. Bam. Okay. Now, let's see. I never told you how to round, right? So technically, um, since we're talking about number of animals, we can't have decimal animals, right? It doesn't even mean, you know, maybe, you know, they're about to give birth, but it's like, okay, we, I personally would just say, well, just get rid of the decimal because decimal, you know, decimal amount of animals, that's kind of nasty. But a, a acceptable answer is 135 as well. Okay, I'll take that. Because I never specified how to round. But again, the big idea on this lesson is that you are going to annotate, set up equation, and then solve for the unknown.